Do you ever feel like you're muzzled by the PMO? Do I you ever... think this is a great day. Yes, the but do you ever... The sun is shining and spring is coming. Did the, did the PMO approve you saying that, though? Absolutely. All right. Conservative MP Bev Shipley being quizzed by her own David Aiken saying it's a beautiful day. Was that comment approved by PMO, says Aiken? Absolutely. That was this morning as conservative MPs headed into caucus. There's a lot of talk about a caucus revolt by the conservative backbench over an attempt by Mark Warwa, who was on the program last night, to talk about sex-selective abortion. He had a member statement that he wanted to make shot down. He also had a an attempt to have a, a motion voted on in the House shot down. A lot of this happening because of moves by the Prime Minister's office. Now, the Procedure and House Affairs Committee, just a quick update before we get to our guest, the Procedure and House Affairs Committee listened to Mark Warwa make an appeal today that his motion should be voted on. They reserved their decision and will report it to the House of Commons tomorrow. There was definitely some strong opposition from people such as Liberal MP Dominic LeBlanc, though. Joining us now for more on the issue of freedom of speech for MPs, the ability of MPs to have their own voice. Ray Hurd, he's had many hats over the years, journalist, bank exec advisor, and, of course, many years working with John Turner, liberal leader. Uh, Ray, does this surprise you at all the, that there's, again, this tension between being Not an individual all. MP and a member of a party? Not at all. Basically, this is a storm in a teacup. This is what I call the seven-year itch. This government, minority, now majority, has been in power seven years. It's a big caucus. It is not unusual. But having said that, I must add one thing. I am the world's greatest, greatest authority on caucus dissent. I'll be brief. <laughs> but when I was with John Turner, and I wasn't there all the eight years he was there, Kretchen, who tried to strangle some guy in Hull, was trying to strangle John Turner every day. And I said publicly, I spent more of my time fighting liberal caucus dissenters than fighting Brian Mulroney. And then, to end this dismal story, when Kretchen got in, having knifed Turner, guess what my guys did to Kretchen, the Martin guys? They stabbed Kretchen in the bank. So my party has had 20 years of caucus revolts. The Tories have not had as big a problem because someone I'm happy to call a friend, Brian Mulroney, managed to control his caucus. I predict that tomorrow that semi-controversial motion will be allowed to be put to a vote because I think the guy who's running Canada, his name is Nigel Wright, Harper's chief of staff, yeah. will be smart enough to back off and not escalate the confrontation. Why do I say that, Brian? Because this is a media-driven story. Well, I, I, I want to play a clip of an MP earlier today talking yeah. about that because it, it is it, partly a media-driven story. I think there is also an issue of MPs having their freedom. But yes. first, let's well, hear from Jay uh, Hillier. He's a conservative MP who was asked about this uh, I believe going into caucus this morning, if not, it's coming out. Here's Mr. Hillier. The real problem is every time there's a discussion, they say, oh, the party's falling apart, oh no, and then if, if the party's united, there, there's obviously some sort of force and, and there's an iron-fisted rule or something like that. It, it's, it's, it's not that way. We're, we're a party. We're not the Communist Party. We can actually talk about things and not agree on, on issues. And when we do, it's not a crisis of, of leadership. It's not a crisis of unity. It's just parties discussing things. Now, Ray, I watched this happen when mm. Michael Ignatieff was opposition leader. Yes. And every time that there was some division in his caucus, people would say, why don't you crack down on them? In the, mm. This is the media, not just yeah. average people. The media would drive in and yeah. say, why don't you crack down on them? Well, you don't have control of your caucus. But well, again, yeah. if he had too much control, it was, why are you muzzling? Party leaders yeah. don't have a lot of wiggle room here. Uh, no, so let's talk about that angle first than and that, how the media plays this. What we have to understand, like it or not, the Canadian Prime Minister has more power than the American President. Our Prime Minister can appoint anyone or her brother to the Supreme Court. In the United States, the Senate has to advise and consent. So, unfortunately, since Pierre Trudeau, we have had imperial Prime Ministers who dictate... Trudeau said to his own caucus, 
None of you guys are worth a dime when you move 20, 30 yards off Parliament Hill. So this is part of a long-standing trend, and I say good luck to anyone, and maybe Joyce Murray is the one who promises to do that, but she's got a tough row ahead of her to beat Justin. I think that what you're seeing now is part of a trend of an imperial prime minister dictating the agenda to the country and, and is, the party. This is why I think that a lot of this is media-driven, but I think there is a real issue here, and that's that the MP should report to us they and should. not to the yeah. party, not they to the should. prime minister. And I can tell you that in Langley, Mr. Warwa's motion would receive an awful lot of support. Yeah, I think that you're right in theory, but in practice... Ottawa doesn't work that way. But it um, should. But it should. in the United States, and I covered LBJ and Nixon every day of their president, so I'm qualified to say this. In the American system, if you're a member of the Democratic Party or the um, GOP, the Republicans, you have the right and the responsibility to disagree with your own party. Ideally, Canada's got to get back to that. I'm just reading a fascinating biography of the weirdest prime minister we ever had, Mackenzie King, who <laughs> spoke to his dog and his dead mother every yeah. day. And Mackenzie King managed to survive for 22 years because he took into account the conflicting demands of his caucus. Brian Mulroney did that. But today, you don't have to do that. And I think that Harper figures, well, it's three years, two and a half, three years to the next election. Who cares about this seven-year itch? And I also feel, because I'm a realist, that some of the bitching and whining is from members of parliament who know they're never going to make it to cabinet. So they've got nothing to lose by being outspoken and maybe getting on the CBC National News tonight. Well, well, we'll, I don't watch we'll see the if you're CBC right on your prediction you. tomorrow about this going forward uh, yeah. tomorrow. But if it doesn't uh, go tomorrow. forward, it shows that they're unyielding and inflexible. I think Stephen Harper and especially Nigel Wright are pretty yielding when it comes to ending It's going to be a, a big revolt. issue for them, if not. Ray, we'll have okay. to leave it there. Uh, Thank check, you very much. Check the blog, lilliespad.ca, for updates on this. And check it out tomorrow, lilliespad.ca. Stick around. We've got more to come.